body to the last BCM of this semester. Let's stand together one last time and worship. I'm Chloe. Um, you guys can be seated. We have a few announcements for you guys. Um, first off, just really, we want to welcome y'all in tonight. Um, welcome to all the seniors and everyone else who is here, who's watching online. We thank you for watching online. 
Um, so let's just jump right into announcements. So his radio has this thing this week, um, this coming week that they want us to be involved with. They're recording a video promotional for the National Day of Prayer. They need a few BCM students to appear in this commercial. So about 15 to 20 of y'all, um, please sign up. They are meeting next Tuesday at 10 a.m. outside of the prayer chapel. Tyler will be in the back tonight with a clipboard. If you are able to do it, please sign up to do this, okay? Yeah, and um, also we know that next week is finals and you guys have a lot of craziness happening. So just know that we are praying for you guys, be encouraged. Um, the BCM family is lifting you guys up as we finish the semester strong. Um, finish it strong, you know, we have a little bit left and we can do it. We've been doing it all year and we just have a little while longer. And I know that God is gonna give us the strength to be able to do that. So be encouraged by that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also tonight, after BCM, there is coffee house in the cap. So they're doing one last coffee house for the semester, and it's in the cap right after BCM. It starts at 8.45, I believe. So be there, be square. Yeah, and then before you go to coffee house, make sure that you stop. We have two tables in the back. We have child evangelism here. Give it up for them. Woo! Yeah. Uh-huh, and we also have Camp Sunshine. They're here tonight, and yeah, give it up for them. Um, they're looking for people. If you still do not have summer plans, this is your last opportunity to sign up for something. So do not miss that opportunity. They will be in the back looking for some people to sign up. Yes, um, and tonight is the last part of our series, Unpopular. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and stand back up, and Mary's gonna pray us back into worship. Um, but just really quick, this last subject that we are talking about tonight is very touchy and very prevalent to what we have all witnessed over the past summer. So just keep your hearts open and hear what God has to say through Joshua tonight about that. Yeah, and then just one more thing before we pray. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have been grateful for Joshua D's leadership, but we have. Have y'all been grateful for that? Yeah. yeah, give it up for him one more time. Um, this year has been crazy. We know that, I mean, starting this year, we didn't know if we were going to be here, if we were going to get sent home, if we were going to be able to come to BCM, if we had to be like 100 feet apart from each other. But thankfully, Joshua has been working, and along with the board and everything that's going on in admin, um, they've been working, and we've been able to have BCM almost every week, which is awesome. And um, would you guys just give it up for Joshua? We want to give him a little bit of appreciation tonight. We love you so much. And um, if you guys want, in the back um, on the counter, there's going to be a poster board. If you want to go back there and write just a little message, you want to sign your name, and it'll be given to Joshua. So don't leave without doing that. We need to um, express our gratitude for this insanely crazy year. But it's been made so amazing by um, his work and also by the work that God has been doing through him. So let's pray. Um, thank you, God, so much for this night, Lord. And I know some of us are coming in with um, maybe just a little bit of sadness because it is the last BCM of the semester, or maybe last BCM because some people are graduating. Um, but I just pray, Lord, that tonight that we would not feel sadness, that we would not feel any of that, Lord, but that we could just be um, remembering what you have done this year, God, and giving you thanks that through this insane year where we thought the world was going to end or craziness was going to happen, Happen. Lord, you still showed up in amazing ways. You still sent people out this summer. You're still working, God. And for that, we have grateful hearts tonight, Lord. So let that be our prayer tonight. Lord, let that be shown in our worship tonight, God, that we could just show gratitude for this season, Lord, that you have given us this year, Lord. Let us continue to praise your name and just adore you tonight, Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank 
mercy never fails me in all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head I will sing of the goodness of God to Christ.
of the goodness of God. Let BCM say amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor, encourage them before you sit down. I'm grateful for you guys. Can someone help me get the platform out here? I mean, not the platform, but the podium. I would appreciate that. Um, I'm so glad you guys came. And I promise you tonight, every time the word of God is opened, something changes. Do you guys believe that? The Bible teaches that his word never returns void. It never comes back empty or bankrupt. That's what that's saying. It never returns void. So tonight we're going to jump right into God's word. If you're ready for that, say amen. First Timothy 2. We're going to be looking at verses 4 through 6. You say, Joshua, that's exactly where we were last week. Yeah, I know. Good. We're going to go back there. First Timothy 2, 4 through 6. We talked last week about the doctrine of exclusivity, the idea that Jesus taught that he is the only way and how this mission is absolutely critical for a Christian to understand. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And how many of you guys remember we illustrated that with some of the leadership team here? You guys, we had all the other ways lined up. How many of you guys remember that? Just slip your hand up. Yeah, great. So we had an illustration. I tried everything I know to do to help you guys see the absolute rickety, deficit, hollow ideas of the world. And Christ comes and satisfies. Amen. It's just an amazing thing. So if you missed that, go back and watch it. All that stuff's available online. Last week, we talked about the exclusivity of Jesus' salvation. This week, listen closely. We're going to talk about the inclusivity of of Jesus's invitation. Let me read it again. Last week, we talked about the exclusivity of Jesus's salvation. This week, we're going to talk about the inclusivity of Jesus's invitation. If you got it, say, "Uh uh-huh. So here's what happens. The non-religious, the non-religious people, when you say the word exclusive, they throw you shade. But the super religious, when you say the word inclusivity, then they throw you shade. Jesus is an equal opportunity offender. As a Christian, you better be prepared to be unpopular to a lost world. And you better be prepared to be unpopular among people who think they've got it all worked out. In super religious assemblies pockets, blogs, websites. You guys get the picture, right? 1 Timothy 2, 4 through 6. Listen to what the scripture says. Who desires all people to be saved. What an incredible statement. who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God, there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. So what's the point? What's the point? Jesus is exclusive in his salvation, but he is inclusive in his invitation. Did you get it? Did you get it? Jesus is exclusive in his salvation. He is inclusive in his invitation. Jesus' salvation, exclusive. Jesus' invitation, inclusive. Very, very unpopular today. You know how I know this? This has nothing to do with my notes right now. I'm just in a moment. You know how I know this? Because when you get online... How many guys are blessed to have a social media account or cursed to have one? I have one too. I know. Sometimes it feels like a curse. We get trapped in our echo chambers and in our tribes, don't we? You like the gospel gospel coalition one time online, you'll be fed gospel coalition for the rest of your life. You watch one Francis Chan video, you're done. You're a goner. You're going to get it for the rest of your life. 
One John Piper video, boom, 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 just coming at you for the rest of your life. Pick your Christian talking head, and it's a trap. It's a trap. Because you begin to believe that that person is the inerrant word of God when the inerrant word of God is the inerrant word of God. Joshua Gilmore has error. The word of God is without error. I say that because tribalism has become so clear in the Christian church and it breaks my heart. I'm totally off script tonight, so just forgive me, okay? Totally off script. But I remember being a student at this campus, sitting, Dr. Krause, sitting right there. I remember me sitting right about there. Actually, right about, yeah, right about there. And I remembered Krause here, you there, and I didn't know who was a Republican, who was a Democrat. I didn't know. I didn't know who was a Pentecostal. I didn't know who was a Baptist. I didn't know. I didn't know who was a Calvinist. I didn't even know what Calvinism was when I first got here. I didn't know. You know how I got to know people? I got to know people. I had conversations with them. I got in their dorm. I looked at their library. I read some of the books that they were reading. The disadvantage of this generation is that we know in an instant everything we want to know. And the, we, the things that discredit them as a friend or as a human being, we have them all ready to go. Pre-populated, we can dismiss you right away. And it breaks my heart. Because Jesus didn't check social media before he agreed to have lunch with somebody. He had lunch with the sinner. He had lunch with the notorious sinner. Unpopular is the name of this series. And I think we've actually grown the, con the congregation in the unpopular series. I love that. <laughs> I believe God is calling us to something hard. I'm challenging you guys to quit doing it the way the world does it and start doing it the way Jesus did it. And when you do that, I was blessed. Again, I was blessed to, to go to school here in 2001. Dr. Krause sitting here with the internet. We didn't have the internet. I mean, we did, but it was like dial up. It was terrible, okay? So we didn't have, so there really just wasn't access to any of that discrimination online. I had no idea. I read all kinds of books. That I didn't know anything about the author, but I read the book. I'm challenging you guys to think different about this because in this day and age, Tribalism, just finding just those two or three voices that you agree with, and that way you don't have to think. That way you don't have to be sharpened. You can just follow in line. When all along, the scripture says, as iron sharpened iron, so one man sharpens another. That means it's uncomfortable. Is that making sense, guys? I know that's hard teaching, but man, that just bubbled up in my spirit. Okay. So some commentators, we're in this, again, we're in this text, and we more time, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This is in a, this, the text about him teaching, Paul is teaching Timothy how to pray. So this is the context here. But he said, he desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. So here's what some commentators think. They think that Paul is actually interrupting his train of thought, and he's just throwing in this mediator piece. I don't think he's doing that. I think he's actually has a consistent train of thought, and he's saying something very precious to this pastor of this church. He's like, hey, if you're going to minister in this pagan city, that is the city of Ephesus. If you're ministering in this pagan city, that is Ephesus, you're going to have to get this right. Jesus' salvation, exclusive. Jesus' invitation, inclusive. You have to get that right. I believe this is central to the Christian faith. Who is the person who, who totally models an inclusive invitation? Everybody say Jesus. 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 Look at the life of Jesus. We're called Christians, right? Which is, which is, I'm not, I'm not, which means like little Christ. 
like not, we're not Christ, but like we're so living, we're so connected with that name. We're Christians. We're to look like Christ, think like Christ, act like Christ, saved by Christ, forgiven by Christ. It's Christ, right? Amen? What did he do? He ministered to the young and the old, to the sick and the strong, the demon possessed, the unclean, the outcast, the ethnically diverse, the foreigner, the exile. This is just a regular Wednesday for him. politician and the peasant, the Jew and the Gentile, the men and the women, the poor and the rich, the uncool, the unpopular and the popular, the skeptical, the faithful. Jesus's ministry is always about everybody. A hundred percent everybody. Oh, that for a place. Oh, that BCM would be a place for everybody. Everybody. Here's the challenge for me as a Christian. I want my gospel invitation to be as inclusive as Jesus. I want my gospel invitation to be as inclusive as Jesus' example. I want to read the gospels and go, yep, my life looks like that. I'm constantly setting a table for everybody. Who desires for all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? What a statement. How do you think this landed on Timothy, by the way? I don't know if you guys know who Timothy is, but Timothy was a young man. We know Paul was the one who was discipling him as this pastor of this church at Ephesus. But guys, Timothy had a Jewish mom who became a convert, who became a Christian, and a Gentile father. So he was what was called a half-breed. So the religious people would go, he's a half-breed. Like he's illegitimate just for being alive. He was born a criminal. He had nothing to do with it. In the eyes of the religious, half-breed. Which is why Paul later on says, I was a Jew of Jews. Since you guys are so snooty and I got to give you guys some sort of secular pedigree for you to even listen to the sermon. He's a half breed. How do you think that this teaching that Jesus is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to the knowledge of the truth? How do you think it landed on him as a half breed? That he was included. Right? You need to look at Jesus' example and he's including everybody with every page that you turn. I bet you he was grateful that all people means all people. So how do we get it twisted? Here's how we get it twisted. This is how the Jewish people at that time, those Jewish converts, remember they're God's chosen people, God's holy people, those God's set apart people. Here's how they got it twisted. They falsely thought that if Jesus is exclusive in his salvation, then he must be exclusive in his invitation too. They thought exclusivity, exclusivity. But what is the story that Jesus tells about evangelism? What is the story he tells? A farmer goes out to sow seed and what happens? What? Some falls on what? Rocky soil. Some falls on what? Soil that thorns are going to come up and choke it out, right? Some falls on hard soil, and literally it hits the ground, and the birds come and pick it off. And then the last one falls on what kind of soil? Good soil, and it bears what? Much fruit. Some of us would look at that story and go, that's bad farming. Just throw the seed on the good soil and produce good fruit. But that's called favoritism and that's not how God asked me to evangelize. I know it's unpopular. A farmer goes out to sow seed. It's telling something about the farmer. It's for everybody. When we make judgments about people and say, oh man, I'm not going to share it with that person. They sit at that table, at that corner of the dining hall. The gospel belongs in that corner. There is not a single corner of creation where God doesn't say, mine, it's mine. These are my people. This is my calling on their life. 
You guys get in that? You feel that? And I'm not coming in with a little gospel flashlight. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The whole thing. It's all mine. So I'm encouraging you guys to say, listen, when we share the gospel, we become judges. And in James, it warns us about that. Have you not become judges? Favoring this and favoring that? An evangelist that I can never quote his name, but man, God used him. Nicole will know who it is. <laughs> God used him to touch my life, though I never met him. He said something that was so good and it's been so significant in my ministry to help me be like Jesus, to help me just love all people, just love them all. He said, what's the evangelism test? How do we know whether we should share the gospel? Here's the answer. Are they breathing? If they're breathing and alive, they need Jesus. Amen? It makes it real easy. <laughs> really easy. Well, Joshua, what if they say no? What if they say, you know what? I'd rather not accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I go, okay. My job is not to save sinners. That's Jesus' job. My job is to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. Amen? Does he still set the captives free? Amen? I'm going to share the good news of the kingdom. And the realities of evangelism, as you t read that story, we know that some, the birds eat up some. We know that the thorns crush another one, and the stones allow them, the seed, not to take root. The realities of evangelism is, even in Jesus' parable, is of the four examples, only one produces fruit. So even in my evangelism, I'm kind of like, no, 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 yes, great. Not getting discouraged by the conversion of that person. Instead saying, this is just exactly how Jesus said it would be when you preach. Does that make sense what I'm telling you guys? And that ought to bolster your confidence. But you won't get there if you're still trying to figure out who's going to be saved before you preach the gospel. And I'm totally off script, but that's okay. Is that okay? Is this all right? We're still going to, I promise, it's all flowing from the text, but it's, there's just so much bottled in my heart right now. People instinctively feel if you are judging them before you speak. They instinctively feel it. And I just, I just look at Jesus and his life, and sinners were attracted to him. They wanted to be with him. And I look at my life, I'm like, man, do sinners want to be with me? Or is there so much self-righteousness? Is there so much... And it's like, man, not that guy. I, I, the reason why Jesus is preaching this text right here, who desires all people, this is the heart of God, all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. When we get that buried down, our witness all of a sudden becomes good news. Instead of making distinctions. I believe it was good news for Timothy who had all the, kind of the, 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 the deck stacked against him. I believe that the religious people there, they thought exclusive salvation, exclusive invitation. It must just be for the Jews, the chosen people. As a matter of fact, they went a step further, and they said it's completely offensive to us that you think that God's going to send salvation to somebody else. It's offensive. And what does Jesus say? Be offended. Because I came for everybody. For God so loved the what? The world. Beautiful. What happens if you're exclusive in your invitation? You play favorites. You make judgment calls. You forsake Jesus' example in your witness. If you are exclusive in your invitation, that's favoritism. But listen, if you are inclusive in your understanding of salvation, that's universalism. And that's dangerous. So we got to get this inclusivity and exclusivity. 
include in our invitation exclude when it's salvation is Jesus only. If is that clear? I'm trying my best, guys. And you're going to take blows from different crowds. It is very unpopular. Jesus is the only way of salvation, but salvation is not only for you. Let me say that again, because that's probably the best summary statement I've got in my notes. Jesus is the only way of salvation, but salvation is not only for you. That's really what this text, I believe, is teaching. Last school year, pre-COVID, I did a series called University. How many guys were here for that series called University? All right. Fantastic. Um, University is a word uh, that means unity in diversity. That's what that word means, if you want to do a little word study on that. And I'm not going to preach that series because, you can, again, you can go back and watch it if you care to do that. But unity in diversity. How do we bring things that are like a math department and a science department and a theology department? How do we bring them all together, this unity in diversity? You create university. Does that make sense? And I told you guys, the kingdom of God really is a university. Uh, there's plenty of people who try to make everything uniform, everything exactly the same, but that's completely not at all the picture of Revelation. It says every tribe, every tongue were gathered around the throne. Amen? There didn't cease to be tribes. There didn't cease to be tongues. There was just unity in diversity, right? There are, so they're still there, all gathered around the throne. Everybody clear on that? And so the object of that university of that praise is Jesus Christ. We know this. So I preached this series, and we took on head-on racism, prejudice. We took head-on this idea of discrimination, the haves and the have-nots. We took that on. We took three weeks of Bible preaching on the subject, railing against it. God hates racism, hates it. It's antithetical to his witness and his example. So we did that. And on the fourth final week of that series, this was last year. This is just last year, pre-COVID. We had a panel discussion right here on the stage. And so three weeks of gospel preaching and then one week of panel discussion to try to just kind of come out at a different angle and help cement some things. And in typical Joshua Gilmore fashion, I went to the back at the end of that panel discussion. It's the fourth week of that series. I went to the back and, uh, and I was just saying goodbye to people as they were leaving. Appreciate you being here. God bless you. Uh, just doing as much as I can to encourage students. And a student came up to me who I didn't recognize. So I was like, hey man, what's your name? Where are you coming from? You just, you know, tw- How many guys have gotten 21 questions from Joshua Gilmore? Okay. I just played 21 questions. Hey man, tell me everything, you know? So I asked the questions and, and he's, he opens up his notebook This is right here, just outside the lobby. He opens up his notebook, and he said, here's some things I want to share with you that I disagree with. I said, okay, uh, lay it on me, man. What's going on? I don't don't care for the way you preach. I go, I'm so sorry, man. (laughs) Um, I, I actually didn't preach tonight. It was a panel discussion. So what you meant to say is you don't agree with the way I facilitate panel discussions. But I hear you, and I'm so sorry. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Um, Probably a little too spicy at times. I'm so sorry. Um, This is how this conversation went. Then he, he said, well, I disagree with what your panelists said. I said, careful. My wife was on that panel. Careful. Careful. The next words better be very careful. Um, And he shared some quotes that he felt like were inappropriate. So, okay. Um, I'm listening, but at this point I'm a little irritated. Anybody been there before? Open, but at this point I'm like a little closed. Because <laughs> um, he just brought my wife into it, and I was like, don't, don't do that. Well, Charlie Butrago, who was my, one of my closest friends, uh, been one of my closest friends since I was 17 years old, um, was also on the panel that night. And he could see that I'm not making any difference. I think he could sense that I was trying to win a brother. I really was. Um, but then the guy called me a communist. And then he called me 
theologically light. And he called me some other things. And I said, okay, uh, I'm so sorry, man. I, I, as far as I know, I didn't make you come here tonight, but, you know, um, I am so sorry that you endured this panel facilitation. I said, did you come to any of the previous three weeks where I literally exegeted three different texts in front of the congregation? Nope, didn't come to any of those. It probably would help give you a context had you come to those. I think that might be helpful to you. Not making any head, headway, Charlie taps me on the shoulder. Charlie Butrago taps me on the shoulder and says, Joshua, come here, come here, come here, come here. He pulls me away and I said, what's going on, Charlie? He said, enough, enough. And Charlie rebukes me right there in the lobby. And that's normal life from our relationship. Um, he said, hey, you're, not, you're not helping this kid. You've let 10 people walk past you. And the time you're trying to help this knucklehead, that's what he called him at that time. I said, Charlie, that's not very kind. I'm just telling you what he said. I said, yeah, you're right. And then I went back to try my best to pray for students, high five students, encourage students, do, do what I do. And uh, I left that night so discouraged. I came to find out that that student did not even attend North Greenville. He actually drove from Clemson on a witch hunt to get little things written in his notebook, bad about me and bad about the panel. By the way, Alex Sands was there, the president of the South Carolina Baptist Convention. He was also on stage. Um, it is, whatever. Uh, the point is, I left so discouraged, so hurt, because I was preaching this gospel that Jesus is for everybody. With fire in my eyes, student, Jesus is for everybody. And that religious bone in you that says, yeah, but, is not of God. Yeah, but, uh, look at Jesus' life. He preached the gospel. He extended invitation for people to come. Come all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And if that makes me a communist, I'm a communist. <laughs> but I'm not a communist, just so y'all know, just for record. Not a communist. Definitely not a communist. When I tell you that Jesus' inclusive invitation is unpopular, I mean it. Be prepared to be called compromising. Be prepared to be called theologically light. Be prepared to be called a communist. But the religious people try to keep others out and Jesus was always trying to let people in they're very different Christ extends an invitation for all men so should we amen it's very simple now I want to talk to my theologians just for a minute my, my, don't raise your hand but you know who you are and you know you're reserving your amen I get it I get it Guys, I'm so theological at times, I won't even sing certain lyrics. Literally, I'll sing like a chorus, and I'm like, I'm not singing that verse. And then I'll sing the chorus again. I'm telling you, that's true life. It happens right here all the time. Not necessarily in BCM band, but just in life. Don't, I'm not throwing shade. Mary, you know it's not like that. It's not, did you just say boo? She did. Anyhow, the BCM, isn't a BCM band incredible? Give them a round of applause. Yes, incredible. We love them. Some of the best human beings ever. I'm trying to identify with my theological people, okay? Just for a moment. Okay. But theologically, we want to protect the study of God and who he is, and we want to make sure we represent him clearly. There is no clearer picture of God than Jesus. Get that theologically hammered down deep in your heart. There is no clearer picture than Christ. And what did Christ do in his ministry? He ministered to everybody. So I think one of the most theologically solid things you can possibly say is we're going we're gonna to sow this good seed of the gospel. We're going to extend the invitation. I just want to liberate you guys a little bit from the trying to figure and sort all this thing out. Listen, you don't know the mind of God. You don't. 
And we've got to trust the word of God that what he's revealed is sufficient to get us up and going in Jesus' name. Amen? So I'm hoping that helps you a little bit. Let me read it one more time. 1 Timothy 2, 4 through 6. Who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gives himself as a ransom for all. That's the word of God. That's the one point of the message. Amen? So here's my heart. My heart is for BCM that when we leave here, and we're going to honor the graduates in just a moment. This is very, very important uh, as a BCM family, we honor our graduates. But as you leave here, as you leave over the summer, and you guys are ministering in camps, and you're ministering in internships, and you're ministering in the marketplace, and you're ministering on the mission field, I want you guys to have this truth nailed down so deep that every single person that crosses your path, love them like Jesus. Amen? Don't try and figure it out. If you believe in the sovereignty of God and that he orders his steps, then he ordered your steps to talk to that person about Jesus. Use it to bolster your confidence, not to give you a way to wiggle out of it. Bolster your confidence that this gospel message will go forward. Guys, I want you to go in great love for all. Can you imagine with me just for a moment that if BCM and North Greenville University was the most loving place on the planet, biblically, just loving, pure Jesus love. And so many of you students do it so well. So many of you students, I mean, you guys just love so hard. I mean, like it convicts me just hanging out with you. I'm like, man, I want to love like that. My heart for BCM is that this will be a place for all people, that we would be courageously relational. Because that's who we are in Christ. Amen? So much of Christianity is just recognizing that's what I once was, and this is who I am in Jesus' name. So tonight, Racism and prejudice and discrimination and favoritism and tribalism or whatever you're roped up into, the haves and the have-nots, whatever, whatever tool you use to finagle your way out of having that gospel conversation, whatever you do, I want you to look at this text tonight and say, man, the heart of God is that all people would come to know him. Amen? Every tribe, every tongue, every, yeah, so good. So I'm going to pray over this, and then we're going to have a time. Of, we're going to transition to a time of recognizing our seniors. God, thank you for this message. Thank you, God, for the truth of your word, and it's unpopular. I can even fit sense in this room. People ricocheting the message. Like, surely, surely. God, I just pray that you would penetrate our hearts with this truth. That we can just love people and preach the gospel to people and trust you. In all things we ask in Jesus' name. Let BCM say amen. Amen. Listen, so tonight we are going to honor our seniors. If you are a senior in the house, I want you to raise your hand. Come on, raise it real tall. Raise it real tall. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, so much of uh, institutional life come up and take your diploma and your mom takes a picture and it's terrible and fuzzy and you look at it later and you ooh and ah, I get it. Okay, there's a whole system of things that happen here. We want to just take a moment and we just want to pray for you. So if you raised your hand and you're a senior, just line up right here across the front as fast as you can, okay? Fast as you can. If you're a senior, please move as fast as you can right here to the front. We've prayed for so many different groups. We prayed for the missionaries. You guys remember the BCM Go people we sent out? Yeah, you guys remember that? Then we prayed for the people who were going to camps. You guys remember all the camp people we lined up? Then we, ha- we prayed for the people who did marketplace missions to say, I want to work at the pet store in Jesus' name. We prayed for them. Okay, every population that we can think of, 
this population of seniors, can we just give them a standing ovation right here and express our appreciation for them? We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. You're awesome. Every one of you are incredible, 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 super incredible, 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 incredible. Right. All right. I just want to give just a, you guys can take a seat. I just want to just give just name and just how we can pray for you. Okay. Name and how we can pray for you. Mary, you kick us off. Uh, my name is Mary. Um, yeah, hi. Um, you guys can pray for me. Um, I guess just like transition-wise, it's hard leaving, being surrounded by people who point you to God all the time, and then going out into the world. So just that. I'm Kelsey. Um, pretty much same thing, transitioning, um, figuring out what God wants me to do with my life. My name is Nicole, and... <laughs> Um, prayers for peace in the transition season. My name is Lauren, and prayers for just intentionality in the last little bit of time that we have. My name is also Lauren. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would just like prayers for uh, wisdom in making decisions in this time. I'm Kristen, and, <laughs> and I would like prayer for um, just this next steps in interning this summer, so mission work, and then figure out what, what comes next. I'm Braden, and if you could be, if you could be, if you could be praying for uh, the kids that I'll be ministering to for this next year at, uh, in Hendersonville. I'm Kay. And um, I think just for like faithful laboring, no matter where I am, uh, my name is Caroline, and um, I guess just pray for this time of transition and also um, just transitioning into, like, full-time job and then the people that I'll be serving in our real estate team. Echo that. My name is Carson, and uh, my, my goal is to be obedient wherever God has placed me to be a good steward with the resources he's given. My name is Jesse. Uh, and, uh, just Pray for the shoulder, uh, and also pray, uh, pray that uh, this summer I'm able to minister to my family well. I'm Joseph. Um, I think a way that you guys can be praying for me just to for me to be um, faithful to the Lord and continue to trust in Him because He knows what's in the future, and just for me to rely on Him through it all. Uh, my name's Kimberly. <laughs> I would say um, prayers to be. Someone that doesn't judge the girls that I'm going to be working with this next year. So. I'm Jared. And, and prayers for where to serve the Lord next. I'm Naomi. And uh, just finding a job and just being patient with whatever God's plan is for my life. <laughs> I'm Danielle. And um, mm -hmm. I guess just finding a full-time job. That would be nice. <laughs> uh, I'm Piazzi. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, prayers to be obedient and to find a new community as we leave such an amazing community here full of uh, Christ-minded people, um, just to find a new community there. Amen. You guys have heard a lot of prayer requests. Prayers for faithfulness. Did you hear that? Prayers for protection. Prayers for favor and finding a job. Prayers for community. Did you guys hear some of these? So you guys got biblically informed, or actually not even biblically informed. You just got testimonially informed about what those prayer requests are. So I'm asking my leadership team to come and just break up in groups of maybe, I don't know, three or four, two or three with them or pray. The rest of you guys, I want you, and can Joshua, where's Joshua's story? I'm always looking for a story. I feel like I could write a book called Where's Joshua's Story on the Keys. Um, um, if you could just hop, if you could hop on the keys for me, story. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some time and we're just gonna pray with them. So if you guys could just bow your heads just for a moment, and I want you to pray a prayer, a blessing over each of these seniors. If you knew one, maybe there's someone up at the front, and you go, oh, I know them. I want you to begin to pray for them as if it were you on the platform and pray the prayers that you would want prayed over you. I want you to begin to do that now. Let's go and pray.
God, we just take a moment and we say, great is your faithfulness. And God, I just pray right now your hand of blessing would be on these seniors that are lined up here that have labored for four years, God. Academically, God, they've labored. Relationally, in some sense, they've labored. It hasn't always been easy, but God, you have been so faithful in their life and you have seen them through. And God, the way they started their freshman year is not the way they're finishing now as their senior year. God, you have been faithful and you have started the work and God, you're faithful to finish the work. So God, I just ask right now for your hand of blessing as they make decisions that are concern their life, God. I pray, God, they would live a life worthy of the calling that they have received. So, God, I pray vocationally, God, that you'd open up a door, soften the hearts of the employers. God, when they see their resume, may it always land on the top. May it always land on the top, just haunting that employer. I just need to, I need to hire this individual. I need to add them to the team because any inch you hire is going to be a good contribution to the team. God, I pray for the student that's wrestling. They're saying, man, I got such rich community here, but God, I'm a little worried. Maybe I won't find community at the next city that I'm called to, the next state that I'm called to. God, I pray you send them the kind of friends that just rock their world. And God, you've given them some friends over these years <laughs> that are going to be with them for the rest of their life. You've given them some rock-solid friendships. God, I just pray for those who are maybe feeling a tinge of like fear and apprehension. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. You've been faithful in the beginning. We trust you'll be faithful in the end. God, I pray that you would just bolster their confidence that you're with them. You said, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Lo, I'm with you always. Never leave you. Never forsake you. And God, many students prayed that they would be faithful. God, this world is faithless. It doesn't believe in you. It doesn't lift you up. It doesn't exalt you. God, I pray that these students, in the midst of any kind of adversity, God, they would be faithful. They say, listen, I'm staking my very life on the word of God, and I'm not budging an inch. I'm going to live and abide in Jesus Christ. And God, I pray they be the kind of students that are just absolute, unmovable, always abounding, steadfast. God, that this is the mark of their life. God, I pray you give them gospel opportunities this summer and beyond. I see here, there's going to be, there's going to be amazing fathers right here on this front of this stage. Amazing men of God great fathers. There's going to be mighty women of God, incredible mothers. There's going to be incredible servants. Literally, when some of these people walk into the church building, the pastor's going to feel the breath of fresh air because they've got servants who say, man, I'm just happy to serve in the household of God. And they're going to have literally a legacy, a legacy changing kind of witness. I pray, God, that you instill that in every one of them. May they never forget. May they never forget and never take for granted the great work that you started here at North Greenville and the great work that is bound to produce much fruit in the years to come. We trust you now. We love you now. We give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give them one more round of applause, guys? I have a handful of announcements uh, before we um, sing. Um, I really do need your help, and I think it's something that's going to be super duper fun. This clipboard is great. It actually has a little compartment right here hidden at the bottom. Look at it. No need to fear. So it has a little compartment there where you can write your name. So there is a thing called, we, and Mary and Chloe uh, did a great job announcing this, but I just want to circle back to it. It's called the National Day of Prayer. And His Radio, how many of you guys are familiar with His Radio? Or, you know, a positive and encouraging, I forget their byline. Um, uh, His Radio is doing a promotional video for the National Day of Prayer. It's a call to prayer. Um, and they're going to be filming that 
this Tuesday, just for me, just say this Tuesday. Yeah, make sure we got it. This Tuesday, I know this exams, and at 10 o'clock in the morning, they're going to meet outside uh, the prayer chapel, which is where the cool fountain is and all of that. Um, the, just outside there at 10 o'clock, and they just need to take some video footage of college students. That's all they're trying to do, and it'll encourage people for this broadcast, that'll be used for this broadcast to encourage people during the National Day of Prayer. If that makes sense, at least say uh uh-huh or owe me or something to make sure I'm with you. Okay. So they're asking for 15 to 20 people to sign up. And so if if you're camera shy, then then maybe this isn't for you. But if you're like, I know you guys aren't. Okay. I know you aren't. Um, Sign up and uh, Tyler, my head ush, is going to pass this around. Remember the hidden compartment. Okay. Get them that pin. Um, I'm really praying for 15 to 20 people. Yeah, I know. Can we give Tyler a round of applause? This dude, incredible. Um, so um, if you're able to do that, please sign your name. Uh, 15 to 20 is, is what, what the bare minimum of what we really need to do to pull this off. So I, if there, I saw 30 names. That would be even better. Um, we need as many as we can this Tuesday to meet outside the prayer chapel for the His Radio National Day of Prayer promotion. This is our last opportunity to deploy students. You guys know the three things we do at BCM. We gather, we equip, and we deploy. We send students out in Jesus' name. Tonight is our last deployment opportunity. In the back, we have Camp Summershine, an incredible camp. Uh, I remember the story of Tori Jacobson who is one of my commuters at Commuter Lunch, and God used that camp to change her life. It's our last opportunity. So if you don't have any summer plans, let me tell you something. That's a great camp opportunity. They send you to literal campgrounds all across the U.S. So you'll you'll get some incredible experiences witnessing the people who actually come to campgrounds. It's kind of like a reverse missionary type situation. (laughs) You travel there, and then they come to you. It's pretty neat. Secondly, We have Child Evangelism Fellowship. So if you have a heart for children, just like Jesus did, (laughs) Jesus had a heart for children, Child Evangelism Fellowship is one of the most rock star organizations for getting the gospel to young people. And they're looking for people to sign up for their summer staff. The last two deployment opportunities you've got tonight. I don't know what your summer plans are. Maybe you're saying, I can give a portion of my summer, not all of my summer. Those people are going to be in the back. They're giving out snacks. They're working the clipboard. Please have conversations with them. Maybe your, maybe your job tonight is just to encourage them and say, hey, I appreciate and value your ministry. Is that making sense? Good. And then the last thing is, we already may mention this, but Coffee House, they're doing that because they're really trying to help students not be so stressed during exams and finals and all those sort of things. So if you've got the time um, and you want to go to the dining hall around 845, they're going to start opening it up and doing coffee house and that sort of thing. And that's always fun. So I encourage you guys to be a part of that. That's the heart of BCM that because Christ ministered BCM. Did you guys see what I just did there? Because Christ ministered, we minister. That's really the heart of this whole thing. So I just want you guys to stand to your feet. We're going to worship our way out. You're never, ever asked to dismiss. We ask you to deploy in Jesus' name, okay? Uh, So after this song, we'll deploy you guys, and we're going to have an incredible time. All right? Sound good? Y'all better sing. All right. uh, Before we sing this song, I was trying to decide of what I wanted to say uh, just to transition this whole thing into this time of worship, but I thought the word of the Lord um, is better than anything that I could say, so I am reading from Psalm 27, Um, and starting in verse 8 says, you have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. And jumping down to verse 13, it says, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And I just pray that that would be the desire of your heart as we sing this song. Um, 
I think for me personally, whenever I sing a song over and over again, it can be really easy to just sing the lyrics, but his word is powerful and we get to sing, show us your glory, God. And when I sing that, I don't want to sing it just because it's some lyrics in a song. I want to sing it because I want to see his face and I want to see his glory. And just like it said in verse 13, that we shall look upon the goodness of the Lord because chains are falling, fear is bowing, hope is being found, and lives are being healed right here and right now. And that's the goodness of the Lord. So we're going to sing this last song, and I pray that it is a celebration within your hearts and that it's not just a song that we sing. chains at this moment.
we don't need to run past this moment. If, if you need prayer tonight, uh, if you're a student here, I mean, this, I just get the impression, like, really strong in my heart, it's really, really insecure. And it's, it's borderline crippling. You're worried about everything and feel like you're not good enough to do anything. But somehow just existing it discredits you from even trying. If that is you tonight and you are in that dark place, hey, Christians, can y'all just start praying real quick for that individual? Um, I just need you to hear this from my heart. It's not even my heart that matters. It's God's word that matters. He said that he will be the glory and the lifter of your head. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you downcast? The very same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. Jesus said, the same way you see me rise, you too shall rise. We say like the prophets of old this season, we say this trial, it too shall pass. Every problem, every trial, every adversity, everything that's going through your head that's just absolutely weighing you down. Listen, it's got an expiration date. It will not last always. God is doing a work in you. And he's the God who sets us free. So I don't, that's you. I encourage you. I'd love to pray with you. Maybe it already, maybe, maybe God's already healing your heart. Maybe some of the leaders you just say, hey, that was me. And you want to pray with them. Let's direct our attention to Jesus one more time. Let's sing this together. He's the thrice holy God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Let's sing it together one more time. If the Lord's been good, can we give him a hand clap of praise and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. Um, you guys are deployed in Jesus' name. Encourage your neighbor. All those things we talked about, sign up on the clipboard. I don't want to rehash all that. But please, please, please uh, engage in the ways that we've encouraged you all tonight. Thank you.